Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the RCAP presentation for allocation year 2024. Um, my name is Clayton Bagwell. I'm with the Nurse Account and Allocation Support and the Business Operations and Support Group. Okay, so the nurse mission is to be the high performance computing facility for research conducted within the US Department of Energy's Office of Science. Um, all interested researchers may apply for time at NERSC and the decisions for awarding allocations are um, made by the program managers at the relevant Office of Science program. Uh, priority is given to those uh, research projects funded by the Office of Science but researchers who are not funded by the Office of Science must demonstrate that their research is in the interest of the particular program and the Office of Science. Um, applications for nurse resources are submitted through what's called ERCAP. ERCAP is the Energy Research Computing Allocations Process. It's accessed through the ERCAP application, which can be reached at um, ercap.nurse.gov. And you log into ERCAP using your NERSC username, password, and a one-time password. Uh, it's used for renewing current projects and to request new projects. And we collect information regarding the science objectives, approach, and resource requirements uh, for the, uh, the project. That includes computer time and community and archival storage space. The ERCAP requests are reviewed and awarded by the DOE Office of Science Program Managers. And the allocation uh, awards for renewals and the new projects are announced in December. For allocation year 2024, uh, we'll be starting the new year on January 17th, 2024. So RCAP um, opened for um, the 2024 request uh, this last Monday, August 21st. And all uh, RCAP submissions are due on October 2nd. Um, even though ERCAP requests can be submitted year round, uh, the vast majority of time is allocated to projects that uh, submit their requests by the October 2nd deadline. Uh, any requests that come in after that uh, risk not having any time available for their project. Uh, the DOE Office of Science Program Managers in your particular field will review the proposals and make their awards, and we will make the announcement of those awards on December 11th, or the week of December 11th this year. And again, um, for the allocation year 2024, which starts January 17th. So the unit of currency for time is node hours. Um, all the allocations, the charging and usage tracking are in this unit of node hours. And we have two distinct allocation pools that are not interchangeable. There are CPU node hours and GPU node hours. So one CPU node hour is the charge for running on one Perlmutter CPU, CPU only node for one hour. And similarly, one GPU node hour is charged for running on a single Perlmutter GPU accelerated node for one hour. So since we only have the one machine, Perlmutter, and there's only so many hours in the day, we have a fairly limited amount of time that can be distributed uh, for NY 2024, uh, the, the time that is provided to the different DOE Office of Science programs is divided into this kind of little part pie chart here. We have a total of about 17.9 million CPU node hours to uh, distribute. And you can, if you can read the, uh, the pie chart, you can see how each program is given a certain percentage of those hours. Um, if you go to, um, our call for proposals page down here at this little bit.ly um, URL, you can see how um, the, the specific numbers for each program, how they're distributed. And oh, I didn't reload. Hmm. Okay. Um, so this is for the GPU node hours, and for some reason the uh, the pie chart didn't uh, didn't load on this one. Uh, for GPU time, we have uh, about 9.89 million GPU node hours to distribute. Um, 
And again, at that same uh, bit.ly page, you can see how those hours are distributed to each program. Um, and your, um, uh, you, your applications need to be able to run on GPUs. And you can go to this page to see if um, it's already, if your code is already supported on GPUs or if there's a, some other version available. Um, if you have, if you need assistance with um, completing your ERCAP request, if you have any problems or questions, you can always contact us by sending an email to allocations at nurse.gov. Um, if you have questions, particularly about GPU applications and performance, uh, it's best to submit a trouble ticket at help.nurse.gov. Uh, we are presenting the ERCAP office hours where you can get individualized help um, four times this year, uh, today. Uh, twice in September and then October 2nd when the ERCAP requests um, deadline is. And if you're here now, you've probably already been to this page where you can get the Zoom login session information. Okay, I'm going to do a quick run through of um, uh, the ERCAP request form and um, show you some of the different uh, information that we collect and some things to help you with filling out and submitting your, your request. So when you log into ERCAP.nurse.gov, you'll be taken to this ERCAP request dashboard. Um, you can see that the dashboard is uh, divided into sections. Uh, at the top, you've got new requests. Below that are draft, draft requests. If you started a request, you don't have to finish it right away. You can save it and then come back and finish it later. Uh, the third section is requests that are under review. Those requests that you've completed and submitted and they're being reviewed by uh, DOE. And then finally, if you have previous ERCAP requests, you'll find a section down at the bottom of the dashboard to show those. Uh, when you log into uh, ERCAP.nurse.gov, if you don't see this dashboard, uh, if you look on the left-hand side into the, uh, the navigator under the section on uh, ERCAP requests, there's a module or a link that goes to manage my requests that will take you to this dashboard page. Uh, there's also other links um, kind of to, that correspond to the little buttons that are on the dashboard. Um, if you want to renew a previous request for 2024, you can either select the top link or that top green button. Um, if you um, don't have a, a project yet, you can still submit um, new requests for 2023. So that's the bottom but button and link. And if you don't need time for this year, but just want to start in 2024, you can use that middle blue button to start your 2024 request. Uh, we have a lot of um, ways to give you clues and, and help text uh, on the form. Um, and, and different colored boxes, uh, text boxes. Uh, we also highlight mandatory things that uh, with an asterisk. Um, so if you see something in red, an asterisk in red, there's a, a, a field that you need to fill out. And on the uh, tabs on the bottom, uh, we've divided up the questions into different tab sections. If there's a, a mandatory question on, under that tab, you'll see a, an asterisk in the uh, next to the tab name. Uh, we also have um, so um, pop-up information. If you ho hover over a label or an item, it can give you some other information about what's required um, for that field. And you'll see some of these fields have little magnifying glasses next to them, which means that they are a list that you can select from. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can um, search through these lists. Um, if you put in a double asterisk, you can see it'll pop down a, a list of about uh, 15 of the, the first uh, selections. Uh, you can refine the list by typing in a word, and the, the, um, the, field, the list will be filtered using that word. Or if there's just uh, too many um, options you're not sure what to select, you can uh, click on the magnifying glass itself and it'll give you a pop-up list with all the, the options in it. And then you can do some additional searches there to find what you're looking for. 
So for instance, here we've got um, the science categories where there are 50 options. So if you pop up the list, uh, you can scroll through all 56 options or if you want to, you can uh, type in a search box for a certain word like physics and it'll um, filter to just the options that have to do with physics. So this is uh, essentially the requ RCAP request header. This is the kind of basic information that we need to, um, to start the RCAP request. Um, so if the first item is, uh, there's a checkbox that says that this request is a renewal. And so what you need to put in there is the RCAP number from the previous request that you want to renew. So if you go back to the, um, the dashboard and down to the the bottom section or previous request and, and see what the number is from a previous request. You can just um, uh, type that into this field and, and look for it. And that will help to pre-populate some of the fields uh, with information from your previous request. In the gray box is the actual ERCAP request number for this request. Um, and we have the project title. Uh, that's probably what you have on your um, your research grant, whatever the title is of your project. And we also have a label, which is a shortened version of your title that uh, is makes it easier to um, list your project in, uh, in lists or, or other reports. Uh, the name of the PI, the designated PI for this project. Um, there may be multiple PIs listed on your um, on your on your grant, uh, but um, we we can only use uh, one of those people as the designated PI for for the uh, project, and I'll show you a little later where you can list the the rest of the the PIs. So you pick um, on the right hand side the project class, and the majority of uh, projects are DOE mission science. Uh, we also have um, an exploratory class. Uh, if you're brand new to NERSC and you've never used Perlmutter or, or HPC um, computers for any research, you can get um, a small number of hours to um, get up and running. Um, so you can select um, exploratory. Um, and then you also need to select uh, what program your uh, either your grant is from or that your research supports. And then again, the uh, the science category. Okay, on the first tab, personnel. So senior investigators, this is the section where you can list the additional principal investigators or the senior people on your research project that will be helping you out. Um, you can also um, select an authorized preparer. So if it's a large project or you have a lot of information to uh, to collect and, and put into the ERCAP request. You can designate somebody to assist you with um, preparing the ERCAP request. Uh, they will need to have a, um, a NERSC account. Um, there are other ways to do it if you're brand new to NERSC, uh, but we can discuss those uh, later offline. Uh, second tab is where is your funding coming from? Um, a little bit change here from previous years. Uh, we're asking you to identify who your primary funding source is. You can have funding from multiple sources, uh, but the DOE program managers want to know who's your primary source of funding. And hopefully it's the DOE Office of Science. <laughs> and so <clears throat> once you selected an option, there'll be um, other fields that will open up. Um, you can select the funding office, um, the uh, the program manager that you're working with um, at the at that particular program, um, and then also there's another field that's hidden there, but that's your your grant numbers or or PAMs or F FWP numbers. And uh, there's a link down there on the on the bottom that'll take you to our page where we list um, the current um, program managers for each program. So other um, places that you can have funding from, there's other federal agencies that we frequently um, pro have projects that have their funding from. So like there's other DOE offices that are not associated with the Office of Science, like uh, nuclear energy and 
um, energy efficiency and renewable energy. Um, so you could put those um, offices down there. There's other other federal agencies like NSF and uh, NIH, um, NASA and DOD as well. And then of course, there'll be a, a section for you to in, uh, include your um, grant numbers uh, that you've received your, your funding from. And then uh, additional areas that you could receive funding, you could have LDRD funding if you're at a, a DOE lab and you get your funding that way. Uh, if you work for a state or local government or even a foreign government agency. Um, there's also universities, uh, nonprofits, and other companies. This Sorry about that. Um, so if your um, project is not funded by the DOE Office of Science, we do have a, a mandatory field down at the bottom where you need to describe how your uh, research uh, supports the particular uh, DOE Office of Science program that you're submitting your request to. And you can get other information um, about the different programs that um, there's a, a link to this. Uh, um, this page to the page that lists the different programs on our website. Okay, the next tab is security. So we, NERSC is an open uh, research platform um, and we do require that all projects uh, must publish their findings and stuff on open scientific journals. We don't allow for proprietary research and there are certain types of information that we are not able to um, provide protection for um, or, or allowed on our system. That's classified or controlled military information, export controlled information, PII, the personally identifiable, identifiable information, and other protected health information. Um, if you think that there is something that's not listed here that you do need to have some type of um exception for you can uh, click the um the box on the right and request an exception and and put in uh exactly what it is that you you need to have the exception granted for the next tab is your project details so there's two sections here the first one is a, a high level description of your project uh kind of a scientific american level description of what you're doing and what you hope to accomplish and then a, a more detailed description for the DOE managers to evaluate the, uh, the technical aspects and, and qualifications of your, your research, uh, which would also help to point out um, how your research supports their mission. If uh, this is a, a renewal request, um, we do want to know about the accomplishments that you've made with NERSC in the previous year. And also, um, links uh, information about any um, publications that you've had published. Uh, and these are published um, uh, or scheduled to be published uh, articles, not uh, not just drafts or um, uh, submitted. Uh, th that information can be put down in the, the section down at the bottom. Okay, then resources. So, First section is the computational resources. Um, how many CPU node hours and GPU node, node hours you need. And these are these fields are uh, numeric fields. So you can't put in, I want 2 million or 2,000 CPU node hours because the system will um, uh, round it down to just the numeric amount. So if you need 2 million node hours, you may end up with only two. And that'll probably put a crimp in your research. Also, we don't use fractions or decimals. So if you put in, I need two and a half thousand or whatever, uh, that number would also get rounded down. Or maybe up, but probably not what you want. Um, so if you are uh, requesting GPU node time, uh, we do re 
request that you put in um, information about the readiness of your code to run on GPUs. Uh, we have a, a, a web page where you can um, that will give you information on how to, to evaluate the readiness of your code. And we already have it uh, set up to run on Perlmutter. Um, here's another new item that we're asking for this year. And that's the, the typical number of nodes that your individual jobs will use concurrently, and also the maximum number of nodes for your individual jobs. If you know this information, uh, we'd appreciate it if you could put that in. That'll help us with our um, uh, making determinations about how to, uh, for future, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Make determinations of how, how to set things up in the future. Um, and there's the, the sim, uh, a, se a separate section for justifying the amount of the compute uh, node hours that you're requesting. Um, so give us how you information on how you calculated how many node hours you need. You know, uh, if you have some benchmark data, you can include that. Um, and just saying that, because you know, this is what we used last year, is, is kind of uh, vague and, and incomplete. We would like a little more uh, information on how did how did you how did you run your jobs previously, and how to to come up with the amount of time that you think you're going to need this year. Uh, the next section is the uh, storage section, so archival storage and uh, the community file system, CFS storage. Um, if, this is a, if this is a um, uh, a renewal request, we'll show you what we currently have as your usage for these um, two storage systems. And you need to request at least enough to cover um, the current amount that you have. Oops, what's going on? this again. Can you still see the, the form, the screen? Yes. Yep. OK, good, thanks. Um, so where was that? You need to request at least uh, the, this uh, enough storage to cover what you're currently using, and um, probably account for at least a 30% increase for, the, for the, the rest of the year or next year. Um, and again, if uh, they need to be whole numbers, even though your usage is in decimals, um, anything you request will will be rounded to a uh, an integer. Um, if you are are not requesting the um, the default amounts, which for HPSS is one terabyte and CFS is twenty terabytes. Um, and if you've already used time at, at NERSC and you already have more than this amount of time, we do want you to, to submit uh, justification for the amount of storage that you're using and how much you plan to use, particularly for the uh, projects that are using a lot of storage space, um, because those, those um, requests will be reviewed by our uh, data group uh, to make sure that we have enough capacity to, to support everybody. Okay, another new item for this year is or how consistent is your usage going to be? Um, so the first item is you plan to use your amount, your time consistently throughout the year. Uh, but if they, you have special times where like if you're not going to have a, a, a researcher or a postdoc or somebody come in until later in the year, you, you need to say how much time you plan to use each quarter and make sure that all adds up to 100% and give us uh, an idea of what the um, uh, what the reason is for um, the, the variation in your use. OK, um, additional items that you can uh, you may want to consider if you're doing if you're um, if you need real-time computing, say you, you have a um, some type of experiment that is running and it's putting out data and you need to process that data as it's being spewed out and then 
either fed back or, or analyzed immediately. Um, tell us what that is and, and why you need it. Um, if your information is essentially um, an observational project or um, and, um, give us information about that and then any other special requirements that you might need um, for your project. Okay, um, so codes. We need information about what codes you are running. And if you're not running any special codes like VASP or, or some of the um, special codes that we have to get licenses for and stuff. If you're using, uh, first of all, some type of third party software that you need us to provide, like a math library of some sort or whatever, give us that information. Um, and then also you can list up to the, the five um, most important codes that you run. And if you don't run, any, again, if you don't run any codes, um, give us information about um, like in the this first um, code section, just put in an NA and then down in the code description, um, tell us what you will be using uh, instead of uh, running a specific code. Okay, uh, supporting information. So <clears throat> um, many big projects will have um, support from other um, computing centers or a local computing center or whatever. Uh, tell us what kind of other outside support you have besides what you're using here at NERSC. <clears throat> and you are also allowed to uh, attach uh, attachments to the request uh, with other information about um, your project, your research. Um, the um, Most of the text boxes have about a um, 1500 character limit. No, no, I'm sorry, 4,000 character limit. Um, so if you need to explain something, uh, particularly about your accomplishments uh, or anything that requires uh, diagrams or graphs or anything like that, you can attach a, uh, a document uh, to the ERCAP request to help support um, your request. Uh, the way to do that is at the top of the form, there's a, a little paperclip looking uh, icon. If you click on that, it'll give you a, um, a pop-up that will let you go to your, your drive and select a document to upload. And then once that a document's uploaded, uh, you just click the little X in the attachments box to close it uh, to get out of the pop-up. <clears throat> and once you've, you, you can also uh, create a, uh, a PDF of your request once you've finished filling it out. Uh, there's a button at the top it's for creating a PDF. And then the all the attachments and all the PDFs and stuff that are attached to the request, they'll show up in the, that top line up there um, below the header bar. And once everything's done, um, the PI needs to affirm that they're going to monitor the usage, um, that uh, they're going to make sure everybody plays fairly and they certify that their statements are true and complete and just add their initials uh, in this little box at the bottom. And then they can click on the submit for review button. Uh, you'll get a pop-up that says, are you sure you're ready to submit? Um, then go ahead and click OK. Um, the system will look for um, um, uh, mandatory fields that didn't get filled out, and it'll give you a, a pop-up at the top or a message at the top of the form saying uh, you need to look at these fields because you missed something. And once everything is good and your uh, request is submitted completely, it'll show up on your dashboard under the uh, section for uh, requests under review. Okay. Um, do we have any questions? I'm going to stop sharing because I can't see anybody. 
There we go. Ariel. Hey there. Um, thanks so much for the presentation. Um, I have a couple of miscellaneous questions, um, and I don't mean to take up a ton of time, um, but uh, let's see, maybe some of the more important ones are um, uh, the section about how many codes will you use? What does that mean exactly? Does that mean like software code bases? I should paste the GitHub link, or does that mean something completely different? No, that's that's basically it. Like if you have, um, yes, particular, well, first of all, we only give you five. So if you're using 20, 10 or 20, you can only just list your top five. So we don't, um, you know, what we need to support and uh, what we need to provide you if you need um, to, to what you need to do your research. Um, I'm not that familiar with all the codes. I know we have a, a web page with a hundreds listed on there that are already supported and stuff. Um, okay, so code but, yeah. really means like software package as opposed to my custom code base. Right. Like I would say I use like PyTorch or something instead of. Right. Um, okay, got it. Right. Um, that makes sense. Um, and then. Um, uh, so I'm using machine learning libraries, so I'm mostly looking for a GPU request. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that CPUs are kind of included on those GPU, GPU nodes um, sort of automatically. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> to tell you the truth, because okay. we, we do have separate CPU nodes and GPU nodes. I don't know if there are... CPUs available on the GPU nodes. I think there might be, but don't take that as um, uh, authoritative sure. answer. Yeah, uh, that's something more for our consultants who actually work with running software and stuff on the on the computers. No problem. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, the technical description. How long is that expected to be generally? Um, so, like I said, the, the fields are about 4,000 characters long, and, and unfortunately, they don't have a character counter on them um, because there's there's some strange stuff that's working in the background. But um, if it looks like it's going to be a really long description, you might want to do a character count on it before you cut and paste it into the, the field. Yeah, it could uh, just it. go ahead and attach it as a separate document. Perfect. Um, Okay, and then I think I just have two other rapid fire questions, if that's okay. okay. Um, I'm a I'm a postdoc. Um, mm -hmm. Is it okay for me to be listed as the PI on this application? Um, do, yeah. do you have uh, a research grant for you on, specifically with your name on it? Um, my supervisor does and I guess my name would be listed on that grant, but I'm not, I wasn't the preparer of that grant, but I am supported by a DOE Office of Science grant. Okay, so your supervisor should be the PI, and you can be um, senior investigator or authorized preparer or whatever. Um, okay, got it. Yeah, um, and that actually leads me to my last question, which is about um, yeah other people to list on the application. So. Um, I work with a couple of people based at, at Berkeley Lab, but I also am working with some folks who are not affiliated with Berkeley. Um, should those folks all be listed on the application or? Um, um, if they're listed on the research grant, yes, go ahead and list them. If they're not, it's okay. Uh, they can just be part of the project after it gets approved. I see. Okay, cool. I think that's, yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. You're welcome.